last, uh, really last few things. Tell us about the Owen Hart Foundation that you started and how, how, how big it's become over the years and what exactly is it? Okay. So, um, well, I started the Owen Hart Foundation. Um, so, well, if I can just go back a sure. bit, you know, when I was going through my really hard legal battle against the WWE and, you know, and it, it was really tough. Like I have to say it was a knockdown drag out fight battle against them. Um, you know, and a lot of people might not realize this, but they actually sued me for breach of Owen's contract. Um, and, and I do talk about this in the episode. I, I wish we could have gotten into it a little bit deeper, but they... How could they sue you for breaching his contract? Well, it was the craziest thing because they had in their contract that, you know, you could only sue them in Connecticut. But I, I wasn't suing them about Owen's contract. It was something totally different. But, you know, through that process of the lawsuit, they were trying everything and anything to muddy the waters mm-hmm. or just intimidate me. Um, and so they were just kind of throwing everything at me, you know, and that was also part and parcel of like sort of um, manipulating Owen's family and muddying the waters and just drawing it out, you know, because th- this was a company, they have deep pockets and they could pay lawyers forever to keep this case just, you know, going and going. And so it had gotten so nasty and so ugly. Like my lawyers, we couldn't even conduct depositions. We had to actually have a judge in the room just to to conduct like basic, you know, depositions because the lawyers were always at each other and they couldn't get anything done. Like it was so vicious. And then Vince sued me because he wanted the case moved to Connecticut because in in Missouri, you're allowed punitive damages, but in Connecticut, you're, you're not. So he was so worried that, you know, oh my God, like there's so much negligence here, like that the, you know, the punitive damages are just going to be like through the roof. So he sued me, which was really tough because I had to actually um, hire lawyers in Connecticut to fight that lawsuit while I was battling the wrongful death lawsuit in Kansas City. And then with the family, you know, um, working against me and and everything was such a mess. It was just so discouraging and awful. And so then, you know, we had um, we'd wanted to stop the delay of like the you know, they were delaying, delaying, delaying. And so then my lawyers said, listen, if we put a number on the table, they won't accept it. But then what happens is the interest starts running on that number. And that will prompt them to speed up the lawsuit. They'll stop delaying. So it was a tactic. So then we put this number on the table that, you know, again, like I didn't want them to accept because I wanted this to go to trial. I wanted accountability. I wanted justice. Right. And then we got to the last day where they had the chance to accept it. And then I said to my lawyers, like I, I kind of panicked and then I phoned my lawyer and I said, like, oh my God, like I never thought about the possibility. What if they accept it? Then where's my justice? Like I don't get my day in court. And and then she said something to me that just sort of like, it was like a bomb dropped. And she said, well, you know, like at the end of the day, like all it's going to come down to is money. That's all this is going to, and no one's going to jail. No one's, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And I just, I'd never thought about it, you know, because all I was just so hell bent on was getting justice. And then when she said that, it was it was crushing to me to think like this is just going to be about money in the end. And then then it just kind of came to me like a flash of light, and I was like, you know what? Then I'm going to make my own justice. And what I'm going to do is, no matter how this thing ends, I am going to start the Owen Hart Foundation. And so it was just like this insight that was just instant that and then it was just like it uplifted me and then I was like I don't care now how this ends because I know what I'm doing with it afterwards Mm. and then you know that's and that's sort of how like my evolution of thought process got me to the point where I could settle the case because before I, I, I looked at settlement like failure, you know, it was like, I don't want that. I want to be in court and I want accountability. But then when I realized I wasn't really going to get the justice that I was looking for legally, so I was going to create my own justice. So I created the Owen Hart Foundation in sort of like Owen's spirit that, you know, it would sort of resemble his kindness and his humanity. Because another thing people might not realize is, just how incredibly kind Owen was. He was the most, he was the kindest person I, I ever met. 
And he was so non-judgmental. He accepted everyone at face value. He never judged anybody. And he would do things that, like, people, it's just kind of unheard of. Like, I remember one time he saw this homeless guy, and he was just checking out of his hotel. And so he said to the guy, you know what, like, I'm leaving early, like this room, you know, you got it till whatever time if you want to go in and have a nap and there's like leftover pizza. And he said, just don't break anything, you know? So he just like, just, he would do stuff like that all the time. Like he helped people all the time, you know? So that was, so that's where, you know, with the foundation, it was just like, ah, this is just like mirroring, like how nice he was and how kind he was. So our mandate's education. We have two signature programs. Um, we provide scholarships for students in need. And also we have a housing component where we help families to purchase homes. And then we also have a partnership program where we partner with lots of other organizations. So we help schools all over the world. We, we do so much stuff. Like I really encourage people to go and check out what we do because yeah, I could talk about it all day. <laughs> and I'm really glad like my kids are super involved and they, you know, they really help out lots with the foundation and, you know, you like had, you had Jerry Seinfeld come perform. I remember seeing that. Yeah, we have. So every year I should mention that too. We do a high profile, um, entertainer event for the Owen Hart Foundation. It's our big fundraiser. And over the years, like we've had so many amazing performers. And you're right, we had Jerry Seinfeld. He came in for our 10th anniversary and he just came in again for our 20th anniversary. But we've had like Robin Williams and Steve Martin, Martin Short. Like we've had wow, that's huge. Just like so like we've had so many great entertainers. We had like Ringo Starr. We had you know, Howie Mandel, we had like Russell Brand, like so many great comedians, you know, so over the years Um, and musicians too, like Elvis Costello and um, Mm. Sarah McLaughlin. And so, you know, yeah, so it's, it's been really good. We had Bob Newhart, which I loved and, (laughs) you know, we we just had so many great people come in for us. And now it was interesting because it was really hard to get going with those types of events. And, but now we've built up such a great reputation as really having these amazing high profile events. Um, that now it's, it's nice because we have a good reputation and, and now they're happy to come in for us. It's not such a grind to kind of get people. And we had Alec Baldwin, which I love because <laughs> he did the whole Trump thing and that was really great. 